Hi everyone, I hope you guys are all well. Um, it's been a, a couple of weeks since I have uh, last posted a review um, video and such, but that's because I've been reading this mammoth book, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. It doesn't look that big. It's this version, um, this print, shall I say, uh, is 715 pages. But look at the size of the text, it's tiny, absolutely tiny. So thus, I've really taken my time um, with this one. This is the actu actually the copy that my mum and dad gave me when I moved out um, to live here. And because they were having a clear out of books as well. And it was kind of like a family version and the same kind of print style with the cream back and everything that Penguin's popular classics um printed i've got the same kind of version with uh as nick for nicholas nickleby as well so you sit side by side on my shelf and they just make me think of home whenever i i i see them my mum and dad's house um so and i think the this was actually the copy that i read when i was about 20 um so i was really happy that this was the this was the actual print that i got to to read this past couple of weeks but anyway, enough about that. Uh, <laughs> better talk about the actual book itself. Um, as I said, David Copperfield, I read it when I was about 20, but because that was like 12 years ago now, I couldn't really recall reading it, which I know sounds a bit strange, but I was in the middle of my um university degree i was starting my final year everything was a bit of a blur <laughs> with studying and such and and my reading anyway because i had to kind of stop reading for um a while during that because i was just so busy so um i'm kind of not surprised that i could have forgotten that i read david copperfield so i kind of gone into this as a um a new read so to speak um, even though I love, 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 love the story of David Copperfield, so I've, I've watched this BBC adaptation, which I've got right here by me, which I'll talk about in a bit, um, which I watched as a teenager and I fell in love with, and I still absolutely love it. It's such a good adaptation. Um, so I've, I know the story vividly from that, but then actually picking up the book, uh, there are things that they, they have changed, obviously, and there's a lot of characters that they cut out, some absolutely extraordinary characters, and meeting them in this book after a very, very long time, it kind of felt like a, a new meeting, as it were, was absolutely wonderful. Um, so, about the book. So the book is written uh, from kind of a third first person perspective it's David Copperfield when he's older writing about his life uh, so he is our narrator and it follows him from before his birth is it very famously it opens uh, with him talking about his life and the beginning of his life and then he refers to that his father left the world three months before he entered it um so you learn about the the family and such and then it flows through with his birth and then follows him all the way till he's about probably about 30 uh so it followed you know quite a chunk of his life thus it's quite big um yet obviously as i said this edition is 715 pages but the print is teeny tiny writing so um because of that i feel like I read probably about a thousand pages. <laughs> it felt like, um, but the thing with with Charles Dickens is that he does do a lot of description in his in his books. But you have to remember that this book um, was written as a serial in a magazine, and once all of the um, parts were done, there were like eighty parts or something. They were then smushed together into a book, and the book was sold. So yeah, so you have to remember that he's writing the minds of um, the magazine readers who may have um, read a chapter and then not read the next chapter for a couple of weeks or something. So, uh, so you know that you have to bear that in mind when you're reading it. The actual um story itself is wonderful it follows david as i said from before his birth to when he's about in his 30s and every step of the way 
you feel as if you are him rather than just following him he and by that i mean it's very personal uh, you you he talks about all of his emotions at each of these stage you feel those emotions especially and it's no surprising that charles dickens himself um wrote that out of all of his characters or his children um as he kind of refers to them david is his favorite and that's because david is him his if you look, if you break down the story of David Copperfield, um, you have the whole things, especially Mr. McCorber is his father, the man with all of these great ideas of things that he was going to do, but ultimately um, Depp caught up with him and he was thrown in Depp's prison, like Mr. McCorber. Uh, for when his father was imprisoned, um, Charles got sent to a, uh, a blacking factory and he had to uh, paste labels onto the jars and that's what he has David do. Uh, in the book it, it isn't uh, blacking, it's a wine factory but in in the BBC adaptation they make it blacking and I think quite a few um, adaptations also do that as well because of the link to Charles um, but you know it's doing the same thing and having to deal with debt and making something new of your life. I absolutely adore all the characters. My favourites are the Peggotty clan. I think they're absolutely wonderful. Mr. Peggotty, um, Clara Peggotty, who's Davy's servant, um, and especially Ham. I love Ham. Ham's, Ham's my boy. I absolutely love him. Um, but what I love about um, David Copperfield especially is that it has very light moments and has very dark moments and Charles uh, kind of covers a whole range of the spectrum um, of people he it's not just a case of the goodies are goodies the baddies are baddies as in some of his books you've got very complex characters um, and I, I like that. I, I really, I really respect him for doing that. And David himself is very complex, especially if you look at his early life and the things that he deals with in his childhood and how that then affects his adulthood. It's, I'm surprised that he didn't need therapy, to be honest. <laughs> for everything that he went through um but then you could say that about a lot of um charles dickens heroes uh given all of the stuff that he throws at them to deal with and they somehow manage to deal you know plow through but i think as um charles got older his stories got darker and david copperfield um is kind of in not necessarily in the midst of the darkness that happens but he's this is the book that kind of starts playing with those aspects uh especially like the the creation of uriah heap in david copperfield is wow because uriah heap uh works as a clerk um at Mr. Wickfield's uh, place. Mr. Wickfield is a friend of David's aunt and when David needs to go to school in the same area she uh, makes kind of a deal with her friends so that he would um, have lodgings and such with them with um, with Mr. Wakefield and his daughter Agnes and then he can go to school every day and such and of course she would she would pay him for it and it becomes his childhood home and Uriah Heap is this kind of sinister slimy rat in the corner and even when you like people shake his hand and then have to wipe the hand clean because it does it feels dirty there's something not quite right he likes to stare at people and he's quite quiet and you know just yeah he's he always creepy but characters like uriah heap um and such when what part of of charles's mind did they come from they're they're absolutely extraordinary when you break them down and when i was saying about the various things of character he likes he very much liked to look at um money and 
poverty and such and he tends to write just as he does in Ava Copperfield how uh, those who are in poverty how good of people they are and such because if you look at the Macaubers and all of the their debt and all stuff that they go through um they are the most wonderful characters in the world and then very much usually the rich are the most sinister and horrible of characters but in this it's interesting that he has Steerforth who's his childhood friend who very much is in has money and such a very comfortable life and how that actually and and his raising affected his development as an as an adult in in regards to his um understanding what a shilling means to somebody and so how that affects his actions in the future and how money turns him cold and obviously with with later on in in the book i'm not going to give any spoilers um to to events and such you can look it up if you want to or pick up the book even better read it um how it affects when he comes into contact with the pegatees for a while he becomes this um man of the of the sea and such and it, 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 you you can see him relax. He's around uh, people who are poorer than him, and he kind of becomes one of them um, for a while. And then suddenly, how he can flip and what what he does. It's so interesting how he starts looking at characters in a more complex manner in David Copperfield. And I think that yeah, as I said, I think that began. Um, a look of complexity of characters throughout his later books um which is extraordinary to read uh, i i just absolutely love them all uh, as i said there's a lot of there you know there's a lot of dark moments i was so upset with the chapter the tempest um because i because i know i knew the story i knew it was coming but still it it whenever Charles has sacrifices in his books. He makes you feel them, really feel them, and I really felt it um, in in this book. Um, but he has so many light moments that are absolutely wonderful, and I adore um, Aunt Aunt Betsy Trotwood and her obsession with donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it sounds crazy but basically what it is is that she lives in dover right by the white cliffs and so people take donkey rides along the the beach and such but it's her land where they're taking these donkey rides and as soon as she hears a donkey she screams donkey donkey janet donkeys and they run out and start you know, hitting the donkeys and the <laughs> try the men who are leading them and with brooms and you know, tell him to get off the land, and it's hysterically funny. I just, I absolutely love her. Um, but I just want to uh, read a little segment of David's first meeting with her, uh, because she came, she she turned up at uh, the cottage where uh, David's mother was, it was and um, her his father had recently died, and she basically says. This baby's going to be a girl. You will name her Betsy Trotwood and I will be in her life. And Clara, his mum, is really kind of taken aback. She goes into labour pretty much there and then. And, of course, he's born. And because he's a boy, Betsy is disgusted. And she storms out of the house and out of their lives. And because of various events that David's gone through in his childhood, uh, he decides to find his aunt. And he's basically walked from London to Dover. Uh, to find her so he's and and living on the streets and begging for money to be able to get food that kind of thing um so he's an absolute mess at this point and he's found her uh trimming her garden at the front of her house and so this is him going up to her so she says go away said miss betsy shaking her head and making a distant chop in the air with her knife go along no boys here I watched her with my heart at my lips and she marched to a corner of her garden and stooped to dig up some little root there. Then, without a scrap of courage but with a great deal of desperation, I went softly in and stood beside her, touching her with my finger. 
If you please, ma'am, I began. She startled and looked up. If you please, aunt. Eh? claimed Miss Betsy in a tone of amazement. I'd never heard I had never heard approach. If you please, aunt, I am your nephew. Oh Lord, said my aunt, and sat flat down on the garden path. I am David Copperfield of Blunderston in Suffolk. When you came on the night when I was born and saw my dear mamma, I've been very unhappy since she died. I have been slighted and taught nothing and thrown upon myself and put to work to no fit for me. It made me run away to you. I was robbed at first, setting out, and have walked all the way and have never slept in a bed since I began the journey. Here my self-support gave way all at once, and with a movement of my hand intended to show her my ragged state and call it to witness that I had suffered something, I broke into a passion of crying, which I suppose had been pent up within me all the week. My aunt, with every sort of expression but wonder discharged from her countenance, sat on the gravel, staring at me until I began to cry. When she got up, in her great hurry, Co uh, collared me and took me into the parlour. Her first proceeding there was to unlock a tall press, bring out several bottles and pour some of the content into e <laughs> of each into her mouth, into my mouth. I think they must have been w taken out of a random, out at random, for I am sure I tasted anise water, uh, uh, anise sauce and, and salad dressing. Sorry, <laughs> anchovy sauce and salad dressing. Sorry, I usually wear glasses and my eyes are a bit funny this morning. Uh, when she had administered these restoratives, as I was still quite hysterical and unable to control my sobs, she put me on her own head. She put me on her sofa with a shawl under my head and a handkerchief from her own head under my feet, lest that I should sully the cover. I have already... Uh, and then sitting herself down beside the, uh, the green fan or, or screen, I've already mentioned so that I could not see her face ejected, ejaculated in uh, intervals. Mercy on us, letting these exclamations off like minute guns. <laughs> After a time, she rang the bell. Janet, said my aunt when her servant came in. Go upstairs, give my compliments to Mr. Dick and say that I wish to speak to him. Janet looked a little surprised to see me lying stiffly on the sofa. I was afraid to move lest it should be displeasing to my aunt, but went on her errand. My aunt, with her hands beside her, walked up and down the room until the gentleman who, who had squinted at me from the upper window came in laughing. Mr. Dick, said my aunt, don't be a fool because nobody can be more discreet than you can when you choose. We all know that, so don't be a fool whatever you are. The gentleman was serious immediately and looked at me. I thought as if he would entreat me to say nothing about the window. Mr. Dick, said my aunt, you have heard me mention David Copperfield. Now, don't pretend that you not to have a memory because you and I know better. David Copperfield, said Mr. Dick, who did not appear to me to remember much about it. David Copperfield, oh yes, to be sure, David, certainly. Well, said my aunt, this is his boy, his son. He would be as like his father if it was not possible to be, if he was not so much like his mother too. His son, said Mr. Dick. David's son, indeed. Yes, pursued my aunt, and he's done a pretty piece of business. He's run away. Oh, his sister Betsy Trotwood would never have run away. My aunt shook her head firmly, confident in her character and behaviour of the girl who never was born. So yeah, so that's Aunt Betsy. Sorry about that terrible reading there because I, I usually wear glasses but I was like because the writing is so small I found it a bit difficult to read um but yeah so his first entry to his aunt's house is a bit manic and crazy and of course um aunt Betsy doesn't know what to do and he's absolutely filthy and it's it's so wonderful um and after Miss, you know, they figure out, right, we should give him a bath and such donkeys then come into the green and she's whacking them like, to get away and such. It's it's so much fun to read that section of the book. Um, but as as with any of his books, Charles Dickens does an absolutely extraordinary job in telling such a complex story. There's so many thing, so many people that um that interweave with each other. Um, there's so many 
wonderful moments in this story. I just absolutely love every moment, even the heartbreaking ones. Um, but yes, I strongly recommend David Copperfield. It is a bit of a chunky book, as I said, and especially in prints like this, where the text is teeny tiny. Um, you just, yeah, have to persevere for you with, through with tiny text like that. Um, but yeah. Thank you, Charles Dickens, for writing such a wonderful lead character. All the other characters are extraordinary. Um, and yes, I absolutely loved it. Now, when it comes to adaptations, there are two adaptations that I have uh, a copy of. The first one is actually from the 1930s. Uh, David Copperfield writes there. So this is one, it, it, they kind of rush the story, they sugar cover it, um, yeah, they they kind of overemphasize the funny elements and mm, don't really necessarily focus on the darker elements, they rewrite some stuff, but <laughs> saying all that, I really like it. Um, the cast, cast is pretty strong, uh, I especially love the depictions of Mr. Dick, uh, Betsy Trotwood, the aunt, and Mr. Micawber. All three of them are absolutely the, the powerhouses, as it were, uh, in this adaptation. It's quite a long one. Uh, I think, yeah, two hours, five minutes. So for that, that time, um, 1935 was the year that it came out. But to have a two hour film in 1935, that was extremely rare. Um, so you can, you can see that they must have you know, thrown a lot of stuff at it um, to make it work. But then if you actually think of it compared to the clunkiness of the book, it's very condensed down. And they've taken a lot of stuff out. And as I said, they've rewritten stuff to make it easier to work for them in film, which, which you know, it's, it's just the way it is. So like, for example, when he's very young, David gets sent away to school. Um, and in this version, they just cut the school out entirely. Uh, so it's a bit weird with Steerforth and how he meets Steerforth, therefore, because in uh, in the book, he meets Steerforth at school. But he kind of, he's, he's just a friend from the school um with Mr. in Canterbury when he's staying with Mr. Wakefield. But in this, he meets him in his other school, his very horrible school, when he's much younger. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a bit weird how Steerforth comes with, into his life in this film. But still, I really like it. Um, I can't help but love it. But the adaptation, which I adore, or I have adored since I was a teenager. I still adore to this day. I've watched the first part this morning before shooting this video because I woke up mega early uh, and I'm going to watch the second part um, as soon as I finish filming my videos uh, and that is David Copperfield by BBC with young Daniel Radcliffe there playing young David. Uh, so what year was this from? I think it was from like the 90s, wasn't it? It had to have been. Oh yeah, it was shown for... <laughs> A Christmas Day and Boxing Day 1999, it was the period drama. Uh, so this is three hours long, so each it, each of the parts is an hour and a half. And this, even though it condenses the book, it condenses it perfectly. Yes, they've taken characters out, but whole, you know, the incomplete storyline, David going back and forth to places, is here in this drama, which I really, really respect. The cast is wonderful absolutely wonderful. Uh, the four that absolutely stand out and funnily when I was reading the book I you think because I know this version so well that I would imagine this cast as I was reading the characters. No I didn't. There was only four where I did that and that was because they were perfect. They are 100% those characters, so I saw them in my mind uh, as as I was reading the book. So the first one is Bob Hoskins, is Wilkins Micawber. Just, oh my god, I love, I love this, I love this drama more now that I've read the book properly. I mean, as I said, I read it when I was like 20, but I can't remember it. But now that I've, you know, I've just finished reading it, Macaw Bob Hoskins Micawber is just sensational. Uh, Maggie Smith's Betsy Trotwood is the other one. 
absolutely wonderful. Nicholas Lindhurst, Uriah Heap should win awards. Or he should have won awards, should I say, because that was he was absolutely um fantastic. And the other one, the final one, who I think didn't get enough praise for what he did with his character, but he's extraordinary. One like he's out the four, he's number one for me. Alan Armstrong as Mr. Peggy the the emotions that he has that he goes through um in the path of the story to do with emily and such uh, how you see him go you know from this man who is all full of life to this man who's full of determination and sorrow and sadness and how he as he gets older you know he's 100 percent focused on finding emily and what's going on with emily you see him kind of become more shabbier and such and how his his light kind of dims but it never goes out he will do what he has to do and the the bit where he goes crazy kind of a bit crazy as it were and he smashes a boat to bits and falls to his knees and just screams it's oh my god it rips your heart in two i absolutely adore alan armstrong for what he did with mr peggotty um i would have loved him to get awards as well for for david copperfield uh, it's absolutely wonderful adaptation wonderful cast um i think this is my this is number one adaptation of david copperfield for me it, it's wonderful now just to finish off there's actually a new film version of david copperfield coming out next year and i have the cast list on my phone so looking at this cast i was a bit like okay i love the cast I'm really excited. I'm like, yes, bring it on. This is going to be great. But at the same time, I can't visualise them as the characters. And I don't know if it's because of like adaptations like like these two that I see, I can understand those those actors and actresses being cast more than I can this list. That sounds really bizarre, I know. Um, but... I, until I see a trailer, I can't judge for anything. But my fear, my absolute fear, is that it's going to be a stinker of an adaptation just because Charles Dickens' adaptations of late have not been great. I mean, look at that Great Expectations with um, Holiday Granger. Oh, gosh, what's his name? The boy that was in War Horse. Um, Helen Bonham Carter and Ray Fiennes. That was not good at all. Uh, and that atrocious version of Nicholas Nickleby back into the in the early 2000s. That was just awful. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm kind of thinking of the negative for the positive, as it were. But I'm just so excited about it. At the same time, I'm really excited about this. Because Dev Patel... An actor who I think is wonderful is playing David Copperfield. Diversity, uh, just casting straight off the mark, having him as David is wonderful. Um, we also have um, Tilda Swinton as Betsy Trotwood playing the aunt. Uh, Hugh Laurie as Mr. Dick. Uh, Yorin Bernard, uh, Barnard, I hope I've pronounced that first name right, but um, he's Steerforth. He was the actor was in um, Dunkirk and such, and I've seen him in a couple of other things. Ben Whishel as Uriah Heep. Ben Whishel is a wonderful actor. And I'm like, yes, he is going to act the hell out of Uriah Heep. He's going to be absolutely wonderful. Peter Capaldi as Mr. Micawber. Yes, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Um, who else have we got? Uh, oh, Paul Whitehouse. Uh and then nobody else really that i recognize um but you know that's not a bad thing uh so but i'm i'm really excited the diversity of casting sounds wonderful but then at the same time until i until i kind of see like pictures or or a trailer i can't quite see them yet in the story and i think that's that's the negative thing that's affecting my brain at the moment but i'm all for it I'll go I'll go see it I just don't want it to turn out bad uh, but we'll just have to see what happens so yeah I'm really excited to see Dev Patel as David Copperfield I think that'll be fantastic um but we'll just have to see what happens when trailers hit and such but that's due out sometime next year but yeah I think I'm about done so that my thoughts on David Copperfield by Charles Dickens which I 
I would recommend, um, but be aware that you might have quite a bit of sections of long descriptions and such because of the way that it was written, the, the how it was published and such. It wasn't published as a book, it was magazine segments. And uh, yeah, so enjoy. Um, so, have you read this book already? I'd love to know what you think. You can leave me a comment in the comments box below, or you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, tie it to your let your side, and I will be back shortly to announce what book I'm going to be reading next, my 101 book review. Oh, I can't believe I've got through 100 books already. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.